There is so much on that first reading to preach on, because we could speak about the prophecy from the book of Ezekiel of the resurrection of the dead. That just as our Lord Jesus Christ promised, 350 years previously, Ezekiel had seen in his vision of the Lord calling forth the dead and this reality, this truth, that God can indeed raise up dry bones that perhaps are nothing more than dust, resurrect them and give them life back by breathing back into them the soul that was in that body. So God has that authority and that power, and we profess our faith in the resurrection from the dead, that when the Lord comes the second time, when that last trumpet sounds, we shall rise. Our mortal bodies will be restored to us, perfected to be glorified. Perfected. That means all those little imperfections will be gone. I'll have it actually a nice full beard as opposed to this scrappy thing. They'll be perfected. <laughs> and so we look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We say that in the creed every Sunday. That beautiful moment when the Lord will restore the full dignity of our human condition, our human person. We're not angels trapped in bodies or souls trapped in this material world. This material world is evil that we need to be freed from. No, we are soul and body, the perfect composite of both, the high point of God's creation, the only creature in all of creation capable of giving God glory on behalf of both the spiritual and material beings. It's a beautiful gift of being human, is that we're like the angels, and that we have a soul, a mortal soul, but we're like this world that we have bodies, but we're the composite of two. The body can't live without the soul, and the soul is incomplete without the body. They're made to be one. And so the Lord will, in his love for humanity, in his love for the beauty of our creation, he will restore the fullness of the dignity of what he created in the resurrection from the dead. So I could preach on that first reading, which I think I just did. (laughs) So that's truth, right? But to receive the beauty and the glory of the resurrection, there is required to live out the twofold commandment our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about today. If we wish, wish to receive the glory, then there is the necessity of following the law. Now notice, the Pharisees had, it wasn't just the Ten Commandments he was asking about, It was somehow 600 or more laws of the Old Testament from the first five books. There are, I think it's actually 6,000, I forget how many numbers, but there's a lot of law there. So which of these are the greatest? Is it the dietary laws, the laws of sacrifice, is it the Ten Commandments? And which of each of them would be the greatest? And they have this whole big thing they're trying to entrap him somehow. And the Lord usually cuts right to the heart of the matter. Not to focus on the law which is essential and important, but to focus on the heart. It's the heart that will guide the law, and the law that will assist the heart to love what is right and what is true. And so in that first part, the Lord says, the first commandment is this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This beautiful gift of our intellect, this beautiful beautiful. A uh, gift of our mind, that we, of our imagination, of our creativity, of our intellect, of our memory. With each of those faculties of our mind, we can truly love God. We use the gift of our imagination, not for sinful things where it likes to go, but to control it and direct it to use our imagination when we read scriptures, to picture the crucifixion, to try to use our imagination, to witness, to be there in our imagination, the beautiful events of our Lord's life. We call it meditation, discursive meditation, using our imagination to truly love God with it, truly love God with our memory. Oftentimes we try to go to all the broken parts of our memory. We tend to wallow in all the pain of the past and all the hurt of the past in our memory. Or we think about perhaps sinful parts of our past. How do we purify that? Well, we try to recall every moment God's working in our past. Try to use our memory to think about all the wonderful things God has done for us. The things he preserved us from doing. That even though we have these sinful things in our past, 
the beautiful gift of the memory is to praise God that he delivered us from those things. When we see the, even the hurtful, painful things we try to find in the memory, what was God doing in those painful times to bring me to something greater? And we praise God. We use the gift of our memory to praise God. And of course, the gift of this intellect of ours to, to read and to study, to come to know the Lord and to love him with our mind by knowing him. To love God with our heart, with all the affections of our heart. It takes meditation and prayer to come to allow the heart to be free to love him. When we meditate on the crucifixion, using our memory, using our imagination, using our creativity to, to sit there and behold the crucifix and think about the love of God, it will tur- turn the heart to truly come to love him and loving God with our heart or any of the mysteries of our Lord's life. They say the longest distance in the world is the head to the heart, right? So we got to make the journey from the head to the heart to allow the heart the freedom to love God. And as we do so, we need to open the heart to welcome God so that he knows he's welcomed and loved there. And of course, with all our soul, our entire being should be gifted to the Lord. Everything of who we are, the core of our very being, the very core of our existence should be one loving act of the Lord, one long life of praising of God. And even if it's in the last moments, we toot out the best song we possibly can. Well, then we toot out the best song. If that's all we have left, there's a few short years to do it. But there's also that love of neighbor that's necessary. Like any good parent, right? Your parents always wanted you as children to get along as you would, and you as parents want your children to get along, right? Our Lord and God wants his children to get along and to truly love that each other. You know, all the seven commandments on the second tablet of thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not come with thy neighbor's wife or thy neighbor's goods. All of these are summed up in that one phrase, love your neighbor, the positive commandment of love your neighbor, so beautifully. Our Lord Jesus Christ hangs upon the cross here over the altar. And it's oftentimes said that the two beams of the cross are the two great commandments. You have the vertical beam of the cross, which is the commandment to love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love the Lord our God, directing our whole life to the Lord, offering ourselves completely to the Father in heaven in the vertical direction of all of our lives to the Father. And then the cross beam, the horizontal beam, is that second commandment of love of neighbor, where our arms are opened to love our neighbor, to care about our neighbor, to even offer ourselves to our neighbor, to open our hearts to our neighbor. When we look upon the cross and we see our Lord Jesus Christ hanging upon that cross, he is fulfilling the twofold commandment, the love of God and the love of neighbor. He offers himself in sacrifice to the Father, to the praise and the honor and the glory of the Father, loving the Lord God with his whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, loving the Father, but he's also loving us as he offers his life for love of us. And so he loves us with the fullness of himself as well. So maybe perhaps when you hold your crucifix, look upon your crucifix, to you think of this twofold commandment of the love of God, the love of neighbor. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. May love nail us to the cross. May his love nail us to the cross. The nail to the wood of the cross by love. We may love the Lord our God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we may love our neighbor as ourselves. And in doing so in the end, receive the glory of the resurrection from the dead the beauty of everything God has promised us, to live with him forever in that kingdom, where he is Lord forever and ever. May God bless you, and Mary keep.